All right, let's continue. In this video, we will see how the basic structural form that previously discussed is applied in the real tall building structures in the world. The independent, Austin's next tallest tower. Engineering the independent, Austin's next tallest tower. This figure shows the panoramic view of the Austin's tower as you might imagine. The appearance of the so-called Jenga Tower is the first thing on everyone's mind. The architects at Road Partners have certainly designed a one-of-a-kind building. But after spending some time with the folks at Sci Engineers, one half of the joint venture with Frank Lamb and Associates collectively overseeing the independent structural engineering, which is obviously designed to look more than a little precarious standing tall. According to Chris Swinson, principle at DCI. It's kind of helpful to imagine the independent as a very tall, square trimaran, that's one of those boats, with two outriggers on either side of the main hull, which stabilize the craft and prevent it from tipping over when it turns. The tower is constructed, around a central core, which is like the main hull of the trimaran, with four corner columns and eight mega columns running up the exterior of the building. The mega columns are what you'd consider the outriggers in this increasingly convoluted boat metaphor. They're connected to the central core of the building via outrigger frames at the tower's crown. To recall, this form of high-rise structure consists of hybrid structural system. The overall structural system is the combination of the basic form of structural system the tower, core wall structure, and outrigger structure. This figure shows a rendering of the crown of the building, with the outrigger frames highlighted in red. The image is taken by road partners. According to Chris Swinson, Tsai engineers with the main building core being proportionally tall and slender, the outrigger links the core to the outer mega columns, creating a wider base which helps reduce lateral deflection and enable thinner concrete walls within the core. When the structure experiences a strong enough gust of wind, it's inevitably going to bend a little every tower does but without this feature, the building would sway more and require a thicker and stiffer central core. Core is engaged through the diagram. Meanwhile, lateral forces are transferred into the outrigger trusses. And finally, forced couple is produced to further resist overturning. The cantilevered tiers of floors are connected to the outer mega columns via a system of steel tensioned rods and compression struts by steel fabricators McAloy, which are respectively oriented diagonally and vertically, as you can see in the diagram. The weight of the extended cantilevered floors is supported by two inch diameter tensioned rods, which are each tied back to the main columns. This enables the long sections of cantilevered floors, which switch sides up the building. Each cantilevered tier is connected by six inch diameter struts, oriented vertically up the edges of these sections, such that the floors will move in unison as well as provide redundant load path within the connected elements. This figure shows a rendering of the independent, with the 34th floor amenity truss highlighted. The image is taken by road partners in addition to the off-center residential floors. This design enables the building's 34th level, known by DCI as the tower's amenity truss, to extend out even further than the other cantilevered tiers, with full story trusses anchored to the side of the main columns supporting the floor which allows it to be cantilevered out a full 30 feet. Figure shows a plan for the layout of the independent's 34th floor amenity truss, with its position in relation to the building's central core visible. This figure shows a rendering of the amenity truss, with rods and struts visible. Image taken by road partners. Perhaps the most interesting thing about these rods and struts is their prominence in the design of the building's interior. With many towers, structural engineers are the unacknowledged heroes, 
their innovations hidden beneath concrete slabs and tucked away on mechanical floors while the architecture they hold up hogs the spotlight. That's not the case here. More so than perhaps any other tower in the city, no effort is taken to disguise or otherwise diminish the visibility of these engineering features in fact, they're kind of on center stage, and probably help reassure the tower's occupants of the building's structural integrity. In the renderings figure shows, you can see the prominence of the rods and struts, plainly visible in the design of the 34th floor amenity truss, the left figure shows, a diagram of the tensioned rods, and compression struts, on the Independence 34th floor amenity truss. Meanwhile, the right right figure, shows a rendering of that same amenity truss, with the rods and struts visible in the design of the room. The images are taken by the DCI engineers road partners. But these features are also visible in the interior design of the residential units in the tower's cantilevered sections. In the residential units of the Independence cantilevered sections, the building's tension rods and compression struts are embraced in the interior design. The second engineering feature that kind of fascinating in this tower is located at the crown in its mechanical section, right at the top of the central core connected to those outrigger trusses we talked about earlier. Inside the top of the core is a 50,000 gallon water tank used to supply the building's fire suppression system. The tank is made from modular fiberglass panels, reinforced with a structural steel frame, however, this particular tank's pulling double duty is a tuned liquid damper also known as a slosh tank that absorbs a certain portion of the energy placed upon the building from heavy winds that might otherwise cause it to sway beyond the comfort level of its occupants. It's the same principle behind the better known tuned mass damp that uses the weight of a large concrete block or other heavy object to compensate for sway in the same manner. Without the damper, under high winds people might notice the motion of the building it could even make them seasick. Next, let's look at the structural design concept of the Absolute Tower, CCTV Headquarters and Lot World Tower. Okay, next, let's look at the structural form of the tall building systems that have built up these three selected buildings. Absolute Towers located at Mississauga, Canada. This building is known as Marilyn Monroe, because of the curvy and hourglass shape. The interesting part of this tower is that, the two towers twist 180 degree from base to top. The absolute towers, consist of five blocks, but only two blocks had a twisted design. The design concept are smooth features, unbroken balconies which it is wrap each floor of the building. Organic form where this building twisting and created a beautiful landmark for the urban area. Another interesting point for this tower, are the, torsional form of the towers, is underpinned with surprisingly simple, and inexpensive, structural solution. The structure was supported by a grid concrete lean bearing walls which manage the load fluctuation created by the oval-shaped floors. The structure is also, provide a dynamically fluid shaping, causes a natural aerodynamics adeptly handles wind loading and ensure comfort throughout all the balconies. The basic structural system used for this tower is, wall circumflex euro frame structures. This figure shows the different rotational angles for every floors. For this structure, we can see that, the main basic structural system used to build this tower is the shear wall structures. This is the CCTV headquarters, the design concept of the structure is a diagrid framing system. The main building is not a traditional tower, but a loop of six horizontal and vertical sections covering 473,000 meters to 5,090,000 square feet of floor space, creating an irregular grid on the building's facade with an open center. The construction of the building is considered to be a structural challenge, especially because it is in a seismic zone.
The building was built, in three buildings, that were joined to become one and a half buildings on the 30th of May 2007. In order not to lock in structural differentials this connection was scheduled in the early morning when the steel in the two towers cooled to the same temperature. The superstructure was fully built from steel and reinforced concrete. The diagrid system, butterfly plates and truss system were used. This figure, shows plan view, rendering view and construction stage of the CCTV building. As we can see at the bottom right of the figure. The CCTV building was built concurrently and finally meet at the corner of the cantilever. This is the Lot World Tower. The tower inspired by traditional Korean arts, including Korean ceramics and calligraphy and is integrated with modern aesthetics. The structure was built with a based mega mat foundation while the superstructure is fully used of steel and reinforced concrete. The structure is encompassed of diagrid system, core wall system, RC mega column, steel beam. The outrigger system and belt truss were designed to resist the lateral force. This figure shows the detailed structural concept of the Lot World Tower, in which we can see on the right figure, the structure is encompassed of diagrid system, core wall system, RC mega column, steel beam. The outrigger system and belt truss were designed to resist the lateral force. Next, let's look at the structural design concept of among of the tallest building in Malaysia. The Exchange 106, Ilimbaru Tower and KKR2 Tower. Exchange 106 is office tapered, by a 12-story high illuminated, crown shape like a perfect diamond cut. It was constructed 1.35 degree angle to reduce the area per floor from 3160 m2 to 2600 m2. The structural design using core wall hybrid system. Structural steel frame outrigger and belt trusses system at L47 and L86 to resist vertical plan rotation. This is Ilimbaru Tower. The architectural concept is a combination of metal accents that create a diamond as a symbol of strength and elegance. The structural concept is using self-bracing diagrid structure, combining with exoskeleton membrane to triangulated RC trusses. And this is the KKR2 tower. Complex Kerjaraya KKR2 is a six-block office complex master plan with 37 levels of 174.4 meters height Okamodotan for Jabatan Kerjaraya JKR The diamond facade concept represent the crown of Malaysian construction industry in KL City. The structural concept encompassed of vertical structure, consist of steel column supporting louvers, RC slanted column, to provide support for cladding, RC lift core, and central core, for structural stability. In conclusion. 1. Every tall buildings are unique. 2. The structural form that built up the building may differ from one into another. 3. Most of the existing structural form, that built the tallest building around the world are a combination of two or more basic structural forms that have been explained in lecture video part 2. Okay, if you have any question, let's discuss during the live streaming session on the 21st of May 2020 at 2.00-5.00 PM. See you all on Thursday. Thank you for listening.